Who were the wise men, the magi, the kings? Who were these guys? So getting ready for the Christmas concert, we had to come up with three wise guys. The problem is <laughs> two of them are girls, right? Two. Two are girls this year. So two of our wise men are going to be wise ladies because that's how the that's how the 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 distribution of being able to do the lines and be able to do the thing. So two of them are girls, and one of them, their little sister, is going to be the the 18 month old Jesus. So hopefully, when the parents are sitting here, they'll be able to put the 18 month old up on the stage, and the kid doesn't. Pew. So if Jesus runs away. He's still in your heart. <laughs> so, yeah, so thinking about the wise guys and, and stuff like that, and, and I love, the, I love the, the whole idea of who these people were and the fact that our traditions have really, really messed up the understanding of who these people were. So who were they? They were these people that came from the east to travel a long, long way to be able to see the baby Jesus, the newborn king, and stopped in to meet with Herod. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. Herod was deeply disturbed by this question, as was all of Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and the teachers of religious law. Where did the prophets say that the Messiah would be born, they asked. In Bethlehem, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. O Bethlehem of Judah, you are not just a lowly village in Judah. For a ruler will come from you who will, be, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod sent a private message to the wise men asking them to come and see him. At this meeting, he learned the exact time when they first saw the star. When he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I might be able to go and worship too. After the interview, the wise men went on their way. Once again, the star appeared to them, guiding them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them, stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house where the child and his, mo where the child and his mother Mary were, and they fell down before him and worshipped him. When then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But when it was time to leave, they went home another way because God had warned them in a dream, do not return to Herod. Heavenly Father, as we look at your word, I pray, Lord Jesus, you just open our hearts to who you are and help us to see how great you are. Help us to realize how amazing you are. Help us to, to help us to realize the significance of the arrival of these, 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 these people from the, from the distant land. We thank you and praise you, and we lift you, Jesus, up on high. Jesus, in your precious name, amen. Who were they? How many were there? What were they? What was the point of the gifts? What did they understand about who Jesus was? When did they arrive? What did the Jewish leaders think about these people's announcement that the king had arrived? How many were there? I can guarantee you there was more than three. There had to be more than three. There must have been more than three. Nobody traveled in a group that small in those days, especially if you're taking camels full of presents or camels full cargo truckloads of gifts you're not going to just have three people you're going to be robbed before you get out of your own town Jesus told the the parable of the good Samaritan and nobody seems surprised that the guy got beaten up at the side of the road and robbed when Jesus was 12 years old and they were traveling to 
Jerusalem for the um, Passover celebration. It says that they were following, traveling in a large group of people. Uh, Luke chapter 2, 44 to 45. Because they assumed he was with friends among the other travelers. But when he did not show up that evening, they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. They traveled in a group. They always traveled in a group. They traveled in a caravan. They traveled in a, in a large pack. These people would have been in a group, a large group of people that arrived into that town, into that city, and they would have been noticed. They were wealthy. They had all kinds of riches that they brought Jesus. All we know is that three gifts were given, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So they just call them the three kings because of the three gifts. That's how you get the three and cause the tradition to say three. There was way more than three. There could have, there were, but there could have been three. There could have been 30. There could have been 300. There could have been 3,000. We don't know. We truly don't know how many there were. But there had to be more than three. There, I think there's more over 100 because if only three people arrived into Jerusalem, how would that have stirred up the city? How would that have drawn enough attention that Herod found out about it? And Herod was interested enough to get private interview with them. If it was only three guys shows up on three camels, that happens all the time. If 30 showed up, it still wouldn't have been that big of a shock. If 300 showed up, there would have been, uh-oh, what's going on? Who are these guys? Why are they here? It would have caused a stir. And this is why, um, why Herod would have noticed it. Were they kings? I don't think they were kings. Because it says that they went home or they returned to their own country. A country or a region or a area of land only has one governmental leader, which means they were something beyond just being kings. They were something different. What were they? Were they magi? What is magi? Were they wise guys? Were they wise men? What are wise men? In Matthew chapter 2, verse 1, is translated as wise men. But the exact very same word in Acts chapter 13, verse 6, which is only in the Bible in two different occasions. In Matthew chapter 2 and Acts chapter 13 is the only times we have this word being used in, the, um, in, in Greek from the, in the New Testament. And the, Matthew, the Acts chapter 13 says, Afterward they preached from town to town across the entire land until finally they reached pa um, Paphos, where they met a Jewish sorcerer, a false prophet named Bar-Jesus. So somebody who's studying some sort of spiritual something is what this guy was when the next time the word is used. Could they have been top advisors to the leadership of the land they came from? Could they have been the, the, the advisors, the wise men, the, the people that, that sat in the king's chamber helping him make decisions that were then sent by the king? We know that they were important. We know that they were, they were something of, of significance because Herod didn't kill them. Herod was ruthless. Herod is willing to kill every boy from the age of two to birth in the town of, in the area of, of Bethlehem. He would have no scruples of killing a handful of people that showed up into Jerusalem. He'd have had no problem with that. And they defied his order. He said, after you find the child, come back and tell me where he is. And they're like, nope. And they were gone the other direction and defied the king over the land. 
You don't do that. These guys were too important for Herod to be going after them or sending an army after them. Even if there was 100 of them or 200 of them or 300 of them, if he sent the Roman army after them or you, he sent a, 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 a group after them, he still could have taken out that many. He took out that many babies. Why wouldn't he take out that many travelers? They're travelers in a foreign land. Some scholar says Ter Herod knew who they were when they arrived. He knew their reputation. He knew that there was something different about these guys. And Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard that they were there. Some people believe that they were the wise and powerful leaders or the advisors to a foreign king and he would have been aware of who they were. First Kings chapter 10 verse 23 to 25, you see somebody showing up with a caravan just like this with their riches. You see in Daniel chapter 1, he the, the uh, Nebuchadnezzar, he had a group of advisors. He had foreign advisors. When they'd conquer a land, they'd take all the, the smartest people and he would then take them to be advisors for him. You see, Dan, you see Nebuchadnezzar, when he has a dream, he wants it interpreted. When he wants information, he has them come and he's always asking information. Daniel came and interpreted the dream. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were people that helped him with stuff. Kings always surrounded themselves with wise people, surrounded themselves with advisors so that they'd be able to make a good decision and they would get this information. When Pharaoh had his dream and Joseph ended up there and he had the dream of the cows and the, and the, the, the wheat, he called in all of his advisors. And that's when Joseph came and interpreted the dream. In 1 Kings chapter 10, verses 1 to 13, we see a wise person from a foreign land arrive in Jerusalem to chat with King Solomon. When the queen of Sheba heard of Solomon's fame, which brought honor to the name of the Lord, she came to test him with hard questions. She arrived in Jerusalem with a large group of attendants and a great caravan of camels loaded with spices large quantities of gold and precious jewels. When she met with Solomon, she talked with him about everything she had on her mind. Solomon had answers for all her questions. Nothing was too hard for the king to explain to her. When the queen of Sheba realized how very wise Solomon was, and when she saw the place that he had built, she was overwhelmed. She was also amazed at the food on his tables and the organization of his officials and their splendid clothing, the cupbearers and the burnt offering Solomon made at the temple of the Lord. She exclaimed to the king, everything I heard about, heard in my country about your achievements and wisdom is true. I didn't believe what was said until I arrived here and I saw it with my own eyes. In fact, I had not heard of half of it. Your wisdom and your prosperity pros are far beyond what I was told. How happy your people must be. What a privilege for your officials to stand here day after day listening to your wisdom. His officials were the wise people. His officials were the people that were supposed to be his advisors. He was advising them. They were getting to hear his wisdom day after day. Praise the Lord your God who delights in you and has placed you on the throne of Israel because of the Lord's eternal love for Israel. He has made you king so that you can rule with justice and righteousness. She gave the king a gift of 9,000 pounds of gold, great quantities of spices, and precious jewels. Never again, now keep in mind this is written in 1 Kings, so this was long before Jesus, never again were so many spices brought 
into as those that Queen Sheba, Queen Sheba gave to King Solomon. In addition, Hiram's ships brought gold from Ophar, and they also brought riches, rich cargoes of red sandalwood and precious jewels. And the king used the sandalwood to make railings for the temple of the Lord and the royal palace and to construct lyres and harps and for their musicians. Never before or since has there been such a supply of sandalwood. King Solomon gave the queen of Sheba whatever she asked for besides all the customary gifts he had so generously given. Then she and all her attendants returned to their own land. You see this Queen of Sheba arriving, but there's a little line in there along with her attendants and large group of attendants and a great caravan of camels. Every one of those camels would have needed to have somebody leading it. It was full of riches, 9,000 pounds of gold. That is a lot of gold. Spices, stuff, just gifts that they brought to give to him. It was normal when a person went to a prophet or a wise man, they brought them gifts. It was commonplace. So when they started arriving into Jerusalem, it was alarming. Something was happening. Something was going on. And you'll notice throughout the Old Testament, Nathan, Samuel, Elijah, when they would arrive to talk to the king, the king would drop what they're doing to hear what the prophet had to say. When Queen of Sheba showed up to see Solomon, Solomon dropped what he was doing to take in Sheba, queen of, the Queen of Sheba. When these guys showed up in Jerusalem and had no interest in Herod, because they were there to, to, to celebrate, to worship the true king of Israel, he should have been freaked out. Why did they bring these gifts? What was the point of these gifts? It was customary. It was normal. It's what they did. And they considered Jesus as superior over them because they went to Jesus rather than Jesus going to them. They dropped what they were doing to go and see this new king. They saw him as their superior. And it was very customary, it was very normal for you to bring a gift to them. You see Saul, King Saul, David's predecessor, when he went to talk to Samuel, they didn't have a gift, and they shouldn't have gone without the gift. 1 Samuel 9, verse 7 and 8, but we don't have anything to offer him, Saul replied. Even our food is gone, and we don't have a thing to give him. Well, the servant said, I have one small silver piece. We can at least offer it to the man of God and see what happens. These guys brought the gifts because they knew they knew that you brought gifts to a new leader that was above you. And it was more than just some little tiny treasure chest. Next two weeks from now, we got little treasure chests, little guys. But they would have brought they would have brought huge amounts of stuff with them. Caravans. Camels. And why was it gold? Because gold is what you give a king. Gold is given to the to to a king as as the as 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 a, th as a sign of the riches, a sign of their of their superiority. Matthew chapter two verse two and three. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star and we've come to worship him. They brought gold because that's what you brought a king. Frankincense. It was the most precious thing or incense or spice thing that you could burn that gave a great odor, which I'm glad we don't burn in here because I wouldn't be able to breathe. But it was, it was like an incense thing that they had and it was the most precious, it was the most, it was the most sought after, it was the best one you could get. 
that was on the market. And they brought pounds of this stuff. And the whole idea of this was it takes you right back to the tabernacle, takes you right back to the temple. And when you look at the New Testament, when you look in Revelations, you look at how it all works in Revelations 5, 8, you see that in the Old Testament, Psalm 141, verse 2, it says that they would put the, the, the incense on the fire and the smoke would go up. And the whole idea of what that was was that the smoke carried the prayers of the people up into heaven. And then in Revelations chapter 5, 8, we see that Jesus is the one that carries the prayers of the people to the Father. This was representing you are the one that will carry the prayers of the people to the Father. And they're giving him the incense, giving him the, the fragrance that, that would be burned, representing what he is going to do. And myrrh, myrrh was an embalming fluid. You see that Mary and Martha as they're going to the, and Nicodemus as they're going to the, to, when they went to, to, to embalm Jesus, this is the stuff they, they embalmed. They brought embalming fluid for a newborn baby. Did they know why they were bringing the embalming fluid? Or did the father work in their heart and say, take the embalming fluid? They weren't even Jews. Bring this embalming fluid. Bring this, this spice because it represented the death that Jesus was going to die. Represented that he's going to be carrying the, pray, the, pray, the prayers of the people. He is the king, but his purpose is his death. Is this why the, the myrrh comes? Is this why the myrrh was brought? Did they know that that was the reason or did they just get told by the Lord, this is what you need to bring? So they brought it. And how old was Jesus when they got there? How old was this kid? Jesus was not laying in a manger when the, when the wise people arrived. And there would have been women in that group. Wise men, wise women, there would have been would have been crowds in that group. There would have been families in that group. Jesus was not an infant. Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. They entered the house where the child and his mother Mary were. And they fell down before him and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The word house is translated 92 times as the word house house or a home or a household or from the house scripture clearly tells us this was not the stable behind the inn they were not in the stable anymore they are in an established house and this word where the child was 25 times child and translated as child or little child young child the same word in mark I think it's Mark 5.39. It's the same word when it talks about when Jesus raised the 12-year-old kid. The same word for child is used there that he goes in there and says that the child is not dead, but just asleep. This is used not for an infant, but for a child. Jesus was not an infant when they arrived. I don't know if anybody noticed, we have our nativity here, and the wise men are are all the way over here because they're not at the stable when Jesus is born. They're just starting out when Jesus is born. Now, with that said, if you see somebody with the wise men at the stable, don't lose your mind. We had somebody come here as a visitor and we it, it accidentally got put by the stable that day that year I have no idea why but it happened they lost their mind on me as soon as the service was over I was torn down one side and up the other that those wise men should not be that close to the stable they shouldn't be there and they freaked out never came back to the church again and I'm like I 
there's bigger things to lose your mind over like hey well how would all the lost people that are walking around us every single day that need to hear the gospel and whether we accidentally put a graven image near another graven image is a whole different situation whole different situation get over it but the reality is jesus was probably about 18 months old because herod oops because Herod had all the children from two years old and younger put to death. Could you imagine? There would have been some people that would have had two little boys by that point. There would have been people that would have had two sons, two kids by that point. Two years old? No birth control, let's face it. They call them Jewish twins for a reason. Two kids born within a 12-month period. There are people that lost two of their children in that point that were two years and younger. And he would have killed the children, not because the star had been out for two years, but because the star would have been out for a certain period of time and he would have exaggerated the time because he would have wanted to make sure in case the baby was born before the star came out, and in case they'd been traveling while the star was out, but he'd only been born today. He killed the whole group. He would have exaggerated the time. So Jesus, I'm going to say he wasn't two, but I'm going to say he was over one. So shoot an arrow down the mirror, Jeff. Let's go with 18 months. Whatever. He probably was able to walk and talk at this point. A few words here and there. He was probably a toddler wandering around. And we know for sure they had not arrived for sure when Jesus was 40 days old. There is no way that the wise men had been there when Jesus was 40 days old because of the offering that Mary and Joseph brought to the temple. They brought two young pigeons when Jesus was 40 days old for the offering. And according to Leviticus chapter 12, verse 6 to 8, you give a young lamb or two pigeons if you're poor. Two young pigeons is the, don't, is the, is the offering for those that were in poverty. And a goat or a lamb was given if you were a person with means. They brought pigeons. They were not wealthy. Then they end up with caravans of gifts that arrive at some point. If the wise men had already been there and they gave two young pigeons, they'd have been ripping God off. So there's no way. Mike, can you close that curtain right there? Yeah. Um, there is no way that they showed up before Jesus was 40 days old. I already mentioned about the Herod killing all the two-year-olds. How did the religious leaders react? How did they respond? The newborn king, the Messiah, had been born. The newborn king was on his, he's here. They should have been so excited. The Messiah, the Messiah they've been waiting for, the Messiah is here. They're just as excited as the current Jews are about the Messiah. They weren't interested. Matthew 2, 38, 3, Matthew 2, verses 3 to 6. When Herod the king heard about this, he was troubled, all of Jerusalem with him. He gathered the chief priests and the scribes and the people together. They would have heard about it too. They knew something was going on. He told them something was going on. They knew and they did nothing. They didn't follow the wise men. They didn't ask the wise men if they could go and worship. They didn't go looking for the child. They, in theory, should have known after Jesus had already been to the temple when he was eight days old and, and, um, and Simeon and Anna had already celebrated his arrival. They weren't interested. 
They didn't care that the Messiah was there because it would have changed their lives too much. They didn't want the Messiah. Just as much as they didn't want him when he was 33 years old. They didn't want the Messiah. They weren't interested. It took Gentiles to worship the newborn king to make him feel welcome. It's really incredible when you think about it. Mary and Joseph would have worshipped him. The shepherds showed up. They showed up at the stable. And as we learned a few years ago, the shepherds, just outside of Jerusalem, would have been shepherds that were raising sacrificial lambs for the use of the temple because they would have needed thousands and they would have needed millions of sacrificial lambs every, um, every Passover weekend. So the shepherds in the area would have been raising lambs for sacrifice. So the shepherds of the sacrificial lambs went to meet the shepherd who was the sacrificial lamb and they were the first ones to worship. And that's why they were the ones that were sent in to see Jesus when he was born. Talk about having being put out of a job. And after the shepherds went home, the next time we see him being worshipped is by Gentiles. So when you think about it, if Jesus, at around 18 months old, is willing to worship the accept the worship of a Gentile, he's willing to accept the worship of us Gentiles also. He's willing to accept us and worship him as the newborn king. He'll accept us. He'll accept us as sinners alike. He'll accept us and allow us to have our sins forgiven so that we can have eternity with him. Tradition may say he arrived at the manger. They arrived at the manger. Tradition may tell us that there was three of them. Tradition might tell us that there were kings from a foreign land. Tradition might make us be very dogmatic or legalistic or freak out over where you put them on the manger setup, on your nativity set. But the whole point of it all is, is that the eternal king arrived with great significance and importance that even the, even the, the, the stars in the sky rejoiced at his arrival. It proved that all of creation was excited that he came. It showed the importance and the significance of his arrival that even the foreign wise men figured out that this is a significant event that needs to be, needs to be recognized. And though his own, God's own people, the Jewish people, they may not have realized it, God still let everybody know that the king of the Jews, the Messiah, the sacrificial lamb, had arrived, and by their arrival, it showed the importance and the significance of Jesus' getting here. How old was he? I don't know. How many of them were there? I don't know. Were they wise men? Were they magi? I don't know. They weren't kings. Does it matter? Not at all. But it's important that they came. It's important that Herod realized, whoa, what's going on? And it's important that they worship the king. The first Gentiles to get to worship Jesus were these people that would have surrounded that town. Oh, poor little Bethlehem with this big group that showed up. That's who they were. That's what, that's what they might have been. But it would have been a big deal. And we can see it happen in the Old Testament when the Queen of Sheba showed up to see Solomon it's the same kind of thing. And that was a foreshadowing of later. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you, God, for this day, Lord. We thank you, God, for how great you are. We thank you, God, for how amazing you are. We thank you, God, for all that you are and all that you're doing. We pray, God, draw closer to you, Lord Jesus. May you, Jesus, be high and lifted up. We thank you, Jesus, that you sent those people to worship you. And they say, wise men still follow you. I pray, Lord God, that we will be wise people and we will follow you, Lord Jesus, and we will long for you and we will worship you and we will give you the best that we've got. Lord Jesus, in your precious and holy name, may we lay down before you the great, the, everything that you've given to us, Lord God, and may we put you first and may we put you 
put you ahead of everything else. And may we lift you, Jesus, lift you, Jesus, up on high. We thank you. We praise you. We give you all the glory and the honor. And we give you all the praise. Jesus, in your precious and holy and glorious, majestic and powerful name, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I never introduced him. But this gentleman sitting right in front of Leslie and John is Pastor Sibley, and he pa he had the record of the longest pastoring in this church up until I passed it a few years ago. And Pastor Sibley was the gentleman that brought this, well, the congregation did it, but brought the church from Lynnhurst to Elgin, and he's the one that got this, found this, somebody, who found the property? Did you stumble across this property to put the church here? Somebody did, and then um, was the one that last week I was talking about choosing car carpet colors and and brick and everything. So he's the one that led this congregation through through the building of this this building, and um, we rang the bell yesterday too. So yeah, so this is pa it's a, for the new people that are here. This is Pastor Sibley, the guy that that was that led this band of misfits through the building of this place and um and we get the we get to reap the 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 um, benefits of of his ministry in the, the nine years right you were here nine years 11. you were here 11 years all right so he would for the 11 years that he um he ministered here so um we'd like to say thank you for those years And um, I don't know if you want me to say this, but today is the end of the 18 year anniversary of Susan's passing. And, um, and also Marion went to see Jesus two months ago. So everybody greet, go ahead and greet Pastor, Pastor Bob Sibley or Pastor Sibley. I don't know what you want to be referred to, but Pastor Sibley in my heart. So Lord bless you guys. Keep this weekend coming in prayer. Food bank, food drive on Saturday. We'd love your help and the light of Christ next Sunday night. Lord bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon.